Hello everyone, this is Ares Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our legendary Zhang Yan Let's Play as we continue for episode 11 from turn 65 in the winter season of 212. So last episode, Cao Pi tried to pull a three army attack on two of our more isolated armies as we had one ambushed back to protect Rene. And we had a tough fight, but a big win. Our treasury is filled with the post-battle loot and we also picked up some very, very good items, including the Mandate of Heaven itself, the Imperial Jade Seal, which we will start equipping our generals with. We have a few level up that we can use as well. Now let's see who else is in their army that's going to determine it. Yeah, now it's going to be leading it. So he's going to have the movement once he level up again. So I think we're going to go towards more range damage and Wisdom of the River. Who else leveled up? One of our bandit girls going to try to get her stock. Now, I do realize their weapon were not great in that fight. Uh, they had trouble killing the archers. But I think that's more of an extreme unit size situation where the generals are going to have a hard time killing, you know, bunches of infantry. A better weapon isn't really going to do them, you know, any better in terms of killing masses of infantry it's just going to be charged from the cavalry or the horse part of the general that can do some damage so i'm not going to invest too much there's plenty of other generals that need items if we have overflows in the future we'll give them something good or oh, oh want to change their stance because they're going to be the ones chasing Yuan Xi's group here he has a good disciplinary whip i think this is Yu Jin's. we'll be picking that up it's not going to be great for the effect, but we'll take the extra points and the gold item itself. We'll clean all of them up first before we distribute the items to everyone, because we might have more by the end of it. Uh, we're just going to delegate these. I don't think we have to worry too much about how they turn out. We will have plenty of time to heal, clean up the land, take back Shangdang, and move on from there. We did not get the gold item, but we did get another piece. I don't think we need more income. I don't even think we need more replenishment. But we're going to take that there. We'll be able to reinforce, which means we can drag them with this group. Or not, because I probably want them to chase after them. We're going to delegate this as well. Only 10% capture rate. But we looked at it. Shenpei actually has our highest capture rate. Right now due to his patient skill. Some bot got captured. Uh, we don't need him. Crafty Operator has a very good Captain Retinue bonus for cost. 15% additional post-battle loot. That's so little for us, given we have so many tribute halls. I think we take the spear and just get rid of one general. Uh, they don't need healing. I think we'll get loot. Especially if it's 1%. Yeah, let's get I believe we can reach that. Problem is, we will have no reinforcement unless we march them. The question is, do we need reinforcement? We're dealing with only two generals. I don't need reinforcements. And that way the girls can get more experience. Cao Cao dropped his horse, which greatly reduces his capture rate, which means we capture him. That horse has such a high escape chance, and Cao Cao's going to die here because he's going to give us both of his items. We're not going to spare him. We already did the same to Cao Pete. He's never going to join us because eventually we'll faction wipe him. He already has us as his nemesis, so no good there. A few years before he dies historically, but uh, 
he got to become emperor, which is something that he can't say for his historical self. Oh my god. Okay, this is mainly because we killed Tulpi, so there was no heir for this turn. So they selected one from all the ruling family, and Yuan Xi took over. Wow. He's right here. We leave him on the field for a turn, because he's going to be equipped with the best item they have, since he's now faction leader. And then we kill him too. And we have Tuldru crying somewhere in the corner. Wow, the family tree shifts completely. Yuan Shao's alive. He went to join the kingdom of Wu. His sons are doing well. Yuan Tan still has his own faction. I'm not planning to take him out anytime soon. Married Wang Liet. Okay. Yuan Xi somehow ended up the leader of the Kingdom of Wei, became an emperor. Yuan Shang got married to Zhang Lu's faction. Or maybe he got recruited. This is probably not a marriage, because he was a faction leader. Or he wasn't a faction leader, but he was heir when we destroyed them. So he probably just got recruited in. But he's heir there, so he's probably married into the family. Faction leader, emperor, faction leader, heir, minister of justice. They're doing great. So Yuan Jing's the adopted son of Yuan Xi. Uh, this is just a weird family tree situation here. 53 being adopted by 37. Uh, but we have their son, I guess. How is Gu Yong also in this? Sun Quan married Yuan Yang, okay. Huang She, Huang Zhu's son. Liu Shan's 12, okay. Huang Zhu, your entire family is in the Kingdom of Wu, what happened? Well, he married the son away. The wife might have been heir and got taken through faction council event. We want her. Much like how this family has been taken apart by us as well. Ma Dai, Mary Lady Tai. She's much older. Right, so if we look at Zhang Lu's family tree, it's not a marriage. He just has Yuan Shang as his heir. Zhang Fu was very confused as the successor to the Celestial Masters. Alright, Taurian got sold, which is why we haven't seen him. He got married away. All right, we have a general idea of who has who. All right, now we can play around with items. So let's see, do we want to be holding the seal ourselves? I mean, sure, we can do that. But that means our son should take the book from us. So it doesn't go on cooldown. And we'll take that rock. Extra prestige, satisfaction, morale when defending, and a little bit of authority. We obviously cannot wear the majesty of the Emperor's uh, armor, so that 10 point is no longer available to us. Anything great here? Tiger, Leopard Commander, we can't use these for the unit recruitment, but we can use it for the other bonuses, which is still quite good. But I want something faction-wide, which in this case, the seven talents of Jian'an or Jian'an Qizi, seven scholars who worked for Wei. 
that were considered very talented Confucian scholars of the period, collectively known by this title, included the likes of Kong Rong, who uh, was one of the member who got killed in this group. Most of them died, uh, not through execution like Kong Rong. A lot of them died in a plague around 207, uh, the same sickness that took Guojia. Uh, the North had a lot of difficult situations around that period, and through the letters of Cao Pi, we learned that many of them, uh, which were his friends, died in that year. We'll add this just for the satisfaction. The stat boost is awesome too. Eight points of expertise should help our very low uh, melee evasion out a little bit. We have new horses, Cao Cao's horse, that extra 25% chance to evade capture post-battle, which is why we caught him. Usually when he loses horse, he dies. Two sets, the standard Shadowrunner set with the Jade Horseman, and the new one for Cao Cao's armor, this is from the mod. We can't complete them, nor do I really want this. It's one of the fastest horses in the game, which is definitely true. Compare that to our Unspottable, which is 80 speed. Uh, the difference is quite staggering, 105 versus 80, uh, with 500 extra mass, but that's not big enough difference to justify the speed difference. Heavenly Fire has a great armor boost, which is something we could consider. This is Sun Jian's old horse. We basically would go up to 67% just with a horse swap. It has the same speed, authority, instinct, both works quite nicely. So we could pull a swap to this one. We got to think about who we want to give this horse to because we don't want it to go on cooldown. I mean, we could, we could just shuffle it down. Should our son get it? There are some authority on our horse. No, it's just all resolve. We could give it to someone like Shenpei. Already has high resolve and just play into that. He did quite well in the last fight. I guess he could be rewarded. Feels like we auto-equipped a horse. We got the Shadow Runner, which I don't think he should ride. The extra burst of speed. I was thinking of taking over the Shadow Runner, but I wonder if it will cause it to go on cooldown because it got auto equipped. Ah, we got away with it. So now he has Heavenly Fire, which is great. We just want that armor bonus. He doesn't have a lot of armor. We are using the Steel Duel Z, which is a decent enough weapon. I have a lot of choices when it comes to weapon. And yeah, we can definitely switch things up. Tall's whole sword is pretty decent. Not as good as our weapon, but the attack speed difference does make up for it. And we also don't lose 12 points expertise, which hurts us quite a bit. Gongsun Zan's weapon's good, but also expertise loss. Minus 25% armor, but we are depending on that because we have mostly base damage. Not sure. Oh, this is Huang Gai's weapon. They're taking the Dynasty Warrior design. Very few generals will use this on the field. Uh, this is not a generic weapon. It's very specialized. Uh, you can think of these as sword breakers. And these are made from bamboo, which... Oh no, resembles bamboo, but it's actually heavy arms. Like, bamboo's not gonna work. Basically, you smash and bend enemy blades. Fatigue immunity wasted on us, so we're not even going to consider that. Campaign movement, charge speed. This is good. But I think this is supposed to be a Ma Chao's weapon, so we're probably going to give it back to him. This might be the best weapon. And it's also Wraith of the North, so that's kind of fitting for us. Do we need Scare? I don't think we... I don't think we come with Scare. Nope, we definitely don't. 
We can get scare, but we also can just skip that. All right, who would take our weapon though? Maybe our wife? But this weapon's meant for someone with brute strength and it's probably gonna be a sentinel who can use the dual weapon. Our two bandit girls? Not so sure about that, but I guess they could. We don't have a lot of sentinels. She has a good sword. She has a good sword. He's just the administrator, so we don't want to lose any more expertise on him. Our wife? Our wife could use... something like this. All right, we're going to give it to these girls. She's stubborn. She's unbreakable. She'll fight to the death. Give her a good weapon. What did we auto equip? We took something. Trust of God. That is not going to our son, who has a pretty decent weapon. Lady Wu, maybe. They both have great weapons. Okay, Trust of God is better, that's for sure. And since she is one of our better characters, I guess she can pick it up. What do we auto equip this time? Nope, not quite right. We'll just put that on. We'll swap everyone else's later. I'm letting him keep the Red Sister. The fatigue immunity is good. He's unbreakable from stubborn. He has a fast horse. His stats are great. Faction-wide bonus. What are we looking for? 10% character experience, 10% trade influence, anti-spying. We want this, but it's on cooldown, so we're gonna wait for next turn to fix that. Just get the income flowing. I think she can wait till next turn, pick up the silver sword. Or she can actually grab that this turn. Because Lady Wu's probably going for upgrade. That's not the upgrade we thought she would grab. We can wait till this sword comes off from cooldown. Give her that. This is an awesome weapon. But this is not Ma Chao's weapon. I believe this is his. It doesn't complete any set though. He has the set for his horse. Oh, this is a great faction-wide satisfaction for air. But our air is very happy, so I don't think we need this. I don't know if any of these fit him. Ah, we do have Vanguard armor. We have two of them. Ruler's armor, which is for administrators apparently. Uh, most vanguards will not become administrators, but they're both base 80 armor. This one's slightly better. Matia and Masu will both get it. And let's give them the cavalry bonus. Their satisfaction is now fine with the new items that we got. We're going to just try to boost their instinct. I think I have more stone Pigs coming back online next turn, so that'll be fine. The extra stats here and there. Uh, satisfaction has recovered. We do have a silver gilded scare. Let's let's wear that. We'll try to get her that bow. The Senbei one to get the set bonus. 
All right, so I think most of our characters got items. Uh, Machal's a little bit confused here. I guess I could give him this. It will add significantly to his damage output. Oh, and also we're trading this out. I don't know if it's improvement because Unbreakable is still great. But we are going to swap that out. We'll get someone deserving of using Rubel's weapon eventually. It'll just have to be in storage for now. Uh, he is the marriage, right? Yes, we used him. We got him through a marriage. Divorce got, got another character through him. The wife club is going strong. We could expand on that. Because right now we have two. Speaking of these, they are going to get recalled so that they can heal rather than stick here on the field. Make sure they're in the right stance so that they can get healed. Oh, we cannot do that. We don't want to run out of loot, especially in the winter. These two armies... Mm, they're pretty much fully healed. Close enough. We're basically going to take Hodol next turn. Uh, they can also swap out of it. We'll do... We'll do a mustering ground for now, for the replenishment bonus. And then in the future, I think it's one black market if we have multiple, because the 50% probably don't stack. And then perhaps this, one 5% research rate plus the extra cover for spies. We are still doing quite a bit of spying mechanics. Public order is not good for us. I don't know why we would want this. The 15 points per siege might be the best part about this, but that's about it. Speaking of spies, Zanba, who we executed. So he's dead. This is a false recruit. And we already have someone in Yuan Tan's faction. We don't actually want anyone he has. We could work on his wife and potentially cause a civil war internally. Because I think the Yuan clan is doing too well for losers. We beat them down so badly. Oh, maybe we can get the administrator here to turn. Yes. It's not his capital. So we can actually surrender territory if we have enough points. And yeah, we can get enough points. Let's use him. And then use her. Huh, he's leading an army in Beihai. Is that restricting him from being able to... Oh, he just got removed from office, so this might be old news. He might not be the current administrator of Pingyuan. We'll see. We'll see what happens next turn. We'll see if it updates. I'm not interested in any of the generals, except for maybe the heir. We can't target her, so we will just wait this one out. If we can take Pingyuan without declaring war on him, that would be great, because then we can complete the north without dealing with him for now. We still have quite a bit of Tosol's army to deal with. They have more. They can send more waves. They're recruiting more as we speak, and the quality units will only go up from here. Alright, we're loaded in cash. Uh, they're willing to sign a peace deal, but we have 11 more turns of our mercenary treaty. We would like to honor that. Gogan's going to get killed soon. Right, I don't think there's much to do there. We'll spend all the money at all our commanderies. I 
I actually do wonder if these are worth building. They do give us additional garrison, but in the interior, where it's less relevant, we don't even have the neighboring enemy commanderies to apply the minus 10 because it's very interior. We're going from 50 banditry through four upgrades to 150 banditry. Feels like a big waste of money, in my opinion. So like having one early on, that 10% building discount, that kind of 10% oh, for the yellow building, which is Tribute Hall, it feels kind of good, but and also we can apply public order to our neighboring commandery. Now that we are no longer in that situation, I feel like it's better to switch this to something that actually make money, like the M building. And there's industry income here, so private workshop, in forge, all feels better than this. And forge building can actually give us what we want in item crafting. Like silver quality bow can be senbei bow. Hmm, there's definitely, definitely an angle there. Yeah, but I think this can be demolished. I don't think we want that anymore. Let's go from the top, see if we can fix anything else. Same thing here. Actually, no. Hone is on the borders. We actually do still need the adjacency. Taiyuan. Let's demolish it. We do have neighbors, but those neighbors will be our territory very soon. We didn't waste much money. Getting that tier one bill for 50, getting that discount makes them quite worth it. But once we're past that point, we just don't need them anymore. And we shouldn't spend money upgrading them. We can get a fourth building slot. All right, so we spend all our cash on buildings. Everywhere is under construction, 9k left. Let's see if we can add some more generals to the ranks. We can go the expensive route, get her a husband, and then use the husband to, like maybe it's a champion. Oh, or a sentinel, even better. Wrong side of the skill tree, though. Burn general, though. Wow. That is not bad. And then we give him a wife. And she turns out to be a, a embezzler. All right, so I think for both of them, Quite useless character. We, we are out of money now, but we will like a divorce, or actually we can just fire straight up. We can do the divorce with the other half. Banish? We don't need the cash. We'll let them join some other faction. Embezzlers are terrible for any sort of court position. He's uh, on assignment, I think. But we have plenty of other characters who need to get on assignment so that they can... Uh, someone's ready here. So they can gain experience and pick up Poison Volley quicker. Uh, let's see, who has a building going next turn? Tyvens has someone doing assignments. Long Yang. Oh, Yobei Ping, let's do that. Someone is here. There we go. We can also look to shift some of our underlings around. Like Yobei Ping feels, a uh, Guangyang feels kind of bad. We have Taiyuan, Hedong will come up. Um, we can do, a, oh, actually right now he should probably stay. I'm being Bohai. Let's go to Hane. 
Ah, uh, we should have done this. My mistake. He went on cooldown, which means he'll be he'll be in Hedong first thing. He'll he'll be fine. We'll give him a a big raise for this turn, and then he can get back to a job and not feel so bad. All right, think that should do it. Let us end turn. Ah, where are you guys running to? Yuan Xi can give us his items. And Li Yan can be trapped here behind enemy lines. This is what we don't like. Cao Cao's faction to go. So they stop doing their schemes against us. Masio has a son. He got promoted. He's no longer administrator. Who is the... Okay, Zhang is the new target. We got this. Oh, come on. at 40 still can't target him huh okay so we try to drop someone else will drop from her maybe he's willing to join already the wife is assassination time we'll have one slot open so we're gonna have to wait he's gonna leave I don't care about him do we have vision of their army? We can look at his item. Unless he has a good item, we don't care about him. Doesn't look like they have good items. We can't see his items. She, as the heir, has a forge master, which we would like. Speaking of items, there's a couple that we want to swap over. Forge Master will be better. Ah, the Lady of the South picking up the Sword of the North. Feels a little wrong. Here, we'll switch. I believe... Oh, we gotta do this first. Hold on, hold on. Got this. It should be an auto-equip for the other side. Perfect. Right, her job is very, very simple. Got three turns of mistrust left. Assassination would happen next turn. Once she gets more cover cost or 25. Yep, we'll have enough next turn. So Yuan Tan dies, she takes over, we cause a civil war after that, and hopefully we can take that land. Or we can try to convince him. He seems very, very, very stubborn. What if we drop it by another 10 points? It would delay the assassination, which is okay. No change on who wants to come. And I still can't target him at 27. I could recruit him, he's gonna leave, so that way he comes back to us anyways. And we can use his points this turn to do another discredit faction. And maybe drop him to 17 and maybe he'll join. Now we're gonna have to wait to see it next turn when everyone leaves, or we can disown someone. Isn't... Isn't, isn't she coming back? Is he already back? He's ready back. I don't want you. He can be an okay administrator. 10% peasantry here, plus 4 public order. That's actually not so great. I don't like the public order bonus. Yeah, lots of actions. What he can do for us, if we can get a couple fight and some more income rolling. 
So now he's back. They don't have a lot of good weapons anymore. He's not getting equipped with new stuff. Do we actually bankrupt Tautal's faction? Uh, let's see. Alright, looks like Tsao invasion is over. For this phase, at least. And we'll do one black market. I don't know if we can... Ah, we can do it. That way we heal back. Now he can have flaming shot without this. And I think we can just drop him from having a... Uh... Yeah, he wouldn't be so unhappy. Speaking of being unhappy, now that we have this, he's back. Uh, it's going to be hard to find him. I'll do this. Give him a bit more expertise. Double Builder combo. There are industry here and commerce. It's a mix of both. But cheaper buildings. Ooh, we got some really good stuff. Except for Grand Academy. Who needs a school? Get the Tribute Hall going. We do not have tea. We can downgrade this one level. This is at least level four or five. Uh, hold on. Let the oldest brother lead. We want to get Roar of the Beast, but I don't want to take these two. So I guess we'll go the top route here. We'll go for the Flame of the Phoenix here. I'm seeing a Stone Pig. He should lead, actually. Eventually he will- oh, actually no, she will have reach. Her skill tree is not like a sentinel's skill tree. I was thinking before we fire him, we find him a wife. Ah, we got another sentinel with poison lolly. We have three now on the field at the same time. Perfect. Uh, you can say goodbye to your husband, who's going to say goodbye to the whole faction. He is also going to get... He's rank 5. We can get some money back with this.
All right, we recalled all the Poison Volley ladies last time, along with Shimpei. Now they can come back together. Where are we going to send them? I think we sent them down south with the main armies against Cao Cao's forces. So I'm going to summon them back in Hene. A very specialized army. We'll chase them down. Declare war on Golgan. Take the Qi path. They will go west. They will heal and they will go west. Oh, they'll go north first, right? They'll go west from Xihe. Oh, one of them planning to stay around Tong Pass. Well, they, they basically had to clean this up first. Or perhaps they can do it and they can just go west right now because they're ready at the port. We'll figure it out. Now, honestly... The few here that are on the opposite end of the tree. Well, he's a burn officer. He's different. We'll, we'll invest in him. I feel like it's going to be hard to invest in them and get them the skill before the game ends. While it's still all relevant. We'll figure it out. Have to wait for the spy to kind of resolve itself next turn. We don't have much money around. We'll build what we can. All right, we have it in. It's private workshop. There's industry here. There's, this is banditry, so it's a little different, but at least there's some industry. And we have a in building that we're probably going to swap. We're going to probably swap this. Because we don't need the two point of satisfaction anymore. We originally kept it for that. All right, every building done, every deal done. Ooh, count us in. You are poor, but do you have savings? Okay. Very good. That will go away soon. The untrustworthiness, the little bit of it. We have six turns of deals with Golgan. I predicted it wasn't going to matter because it's going to take us longer than 10 turns to take out Tal Tal's forces in the north. Looks like it's going to be faster. So we, we, we might need to do something about that. Or we can keep him alive. There's always going to be a force around the north and we can just clean him up afterwards. This family army kind of need to get better. This is probably our weakest army of the bunch. Uh, this one's also kind of bad, the infantry side. The cavalry side's great. Not really anything to upgrade into. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait till those Imperial units come in or else there's just nothing good. All right, we'll end turn here. They hopped into a boat. They're coming to Hene. And they're recruiting an army at Sea Path. Okay. The war in the north is not over. The second wave is coming, and we're getting all these Oh my god. That's that's a lot of reserve hits. 
you know, depleting our supplies, dropping our population, and... Ooh, civil war. Our guy became a faction leader. He led a civil war. Give me the payment. Give me the item. We got a gold item. I think it looks like another Vanguard gear. We don't have a third Vanguard right now, so... Not gonna get used. Our, our spying split the faction. Right, she's still heir. Yuan can still get assassinated. We just can't take Ping Yuan. Uh, we could declare war on them. We're not. We're not in any deals with a new Splinter faction. He is our spy, poor guy. But he opened up a path for us to kill. Kill him and take Ping Yuan. Yeah, we have absolutely no deal with him. As a new faction, I can't believe he, we can't trade with him. He does have a free trade route. What is he talking about? He literally borders us. I actually don't think this army can take us, given that we have 12 sets or 12 uses of Poison Volley. But we would still like to ambush them here. At the landing. And then we'll, we'll even bait. We'll bait with the girls. We'll put them in, in camp. Let them go for it. And then bump into our ambush and we wipe them out together. I will take care of... Oh, he's... Okay, it's fine. Give us another turn. I think the all-cav army can go and raid. There's only one settlement that's not walled. Oh, there's two. That we can quote-unquote raid. Level 10 Chang'an. That's not really a raiding target. A gate pass. A level 4 settlement here in Anding, which is a little difficult to take as well. Alternatively, we can go take the fishing village. And then come back down once they take the pass. Or we all go to the pass together because they're building up quite quickly. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, we should go a little bit in front. And then ambush. In case they, they feel up to the task to kill some cavalry, they might feel strong. This is fine. Yeah, we have no one to wear that. We might need to look at assignments again. Nope, everyone's still here. That can be taken out. We hit the final form. 15%. The the final the final upgrade gives us another 5% construction cost discount. But most importantly, a 10% jump in that post battle loot. Which would be massive. Which is why I guess for bandit faction, since food is not gonna be an issue, you should just go tall. Actually, could we convert? No. Could we convert? Yeah, let's convert that first. Alright, what is our faction rank? Still pretty far from bandit leader. We need some more land. Honestly, a pretty clean split for the splinter faction. The army split, everything. Not so bad. Mistrust for two turns. We're gonna just wait the two turns for this. 
If we do an interference, get it up to should refresh. Yeah, it's growing fast. We're going to be fine. He's going to get killed in two turns. And then Wang Lei will get whatever item they have. I'll recall her, and that's pretty much done with Yuan Tan's faction. Don't have to worry too much about it. I think we can we can end turn here. See if Tao Tao falls for any of our tricks. Or actually, Yuan Xi falls for any of our tricks. Tao Tao is dead. Tao Pi is dead. I think Tao Zhang might be dead too. I, I thought he has... How did he bypass my ambush? I mean, sure, take it. We'll, we'll take it back, but... Absolutely just walked by us. That's not a trade. All right, we finished another one of these. We got another four point of satisfaction. We can keep going with that. One additional trade agreement, that is lucrative. And then one additional underling over here is also good. I'm gonna take this first, I want the trade. They are pretty much fully replenished. That's going to be a tough, tough fight at the pass. I don't know how we can deal with this. We have an all-cav army. That's not really what we're good for. They bypassed us. They're still going to die. First, we wipe this. That's pretty much all he's carrying. I don't know how far we can pull it back. Barely anything. What if we march? Barely anything. Okay, so we're not going to be able to help with this fight, but we don't need them. We have a much more powerful secret weapon. Oh, it's not going to be Pyrrhic. It's going to be very ugly for them. They don't have enough cavalry, which means the poison volley would do its thing. So let's go. Alrighty, we're gonna wait for the reinforcements to show up. They're our main force. We can. Well, except for the two boys. We can gorilla deploy behind them, actually. Just kind of wait it out in the corner here. They also have siege weapons, so. Let's go. Let's get them first. Wear them down. I think one of the girls have stock. Not yet. 
Not yet. They will eventually pick it up. All three of them. Any takers on duels? Ah, we have a few. We'll be asking for them. He's decked out. This is not going to be easy, but we're going to try it with Gong Sun Zan's new weapon. A lot of armor piercing. We added a lot of stats. If we can't beat him this way, we're, we're never going to beat him. Alright, Dad, let me give you a little bit of charge bonus, which I don't think helps. If we do mending, our armor goes above 100%. That should negate a huge chunk of his damage. He doesn't have the increase in evasion. Not that he needs it. He's rivals with someone in his own group. Coral. Okay, so if we kill Coral, we take away parts of his damage. We should consider that. Oh, please pile together. Please pile together. That's so beautiful. Fire, please. Anytime now. Anytime now. I need them to stay in that position for about 30 seconds. We don't want to overlap it too much. Hit a couple of these in the back. Oh, we're getting we're getting great value. That's a great shot on those two. Yeah, we're losing. It's okay. Dying is a strategy too. We dismount and then we kill him afterwards. Oh my God, they're getting brutally murdered here. Our dad, we're ready to interfere. Get him! I'll right, we'll go back to micro in these. We killed him. Easy. Not as clumped as before, and also we got hit by one of their infantry. Oh, we are not on our horse, getting charged by enemy cavalry. Not good. He got cancelled. Get get back into the fight. Ah, gotta micro these over here. There we go, got that going. Actually no, let's just wait till their line reforms. You back on your horse? Are you back on your horse? He's trying. Let me go after that. I... She's mounted. Okay, good. Alright, we're gonna smack him. Easy. Ah, she got charged on. We're getting charged on as well. We're really far from our horse, so we might be stuck here. It's quite a long distance to walk. I'm gonna try to just hit the healthy ones. Spear units. Walk up. Axe units behind. 
Do we fire it off? I don't think so. Oh, I canceled it. They still got poisoned. The damage is a little less from the impact, but the poison is still the same, so not not terrible. Uh, did he kill off the cavalry? I think he can beat up this cavalry. He is killing this cavalry group. Yeah, he's fine. Ooh, we got hit by cavalry. I can't really do anything here. Alright, so he killed the cavalry unit. Maybe we can make it to the horse. Lead them to the line. Lead them to the line. Get back on your horse. I don't think we need to use the ability anymore. She pulled back. I think she has a job to go and kill that. We didn't get to our horse, unfortunately. Let's see if we can force him to it. unit on the spear spear unit on the cav uh, he's gonna die anyways so might as well poison them that makes any logical sense I don't know if he can get his horse, but I know I can poison the rest of these units here. I don't think he got hit. He did not get poisoned. Alright, we're fine. They're gonna rout. They're gonna rout. They already routed. We'll hit whoever we can. We don't need to be picky about the counters. They're all going to route anyways. Who has not routed? Right. Battle's over. Probably shouldn't have been this close. I mean, Yu Jin's tough cookie with his high evasion, good up weapons, which is why Zhang Ya went down. Oh, we'll take another garlic. I don't know if I want them to ambush. I mean, even for them, I think it's better for them just to be over here. They be inside. We can definitely heal. Go for the stock. They can't get over there in one turn. We'll group them back together. This is going to be a siege setup, but the siege battle will have to be next step. Oh, we can't reach them. But the cavalry army definitely can. So we're basically going to have to force them to sally out and fight us. That is going to be the approach here. 
In the meantime, seven turns to a reserve depletion. That's basically never going to happen. But we're basically going to siege them until they come out. It's going to be the new plan. They might have night battle. They do. And the new plan is... We break the siege. And ambush right here. Or go back a little bit. 80%, 80%. Also out, out of their range. We will stand here because we can't move. Uh, they hit us, we retreat. And then they chase, they fall into the ambush outside of their reinforcement range, hopefully, because it would be right here. And then we can hit them with the ambush. We'll be on offense, so they can't night battle us. And that would be how we set that up. So that's probably going to end our episode here. We still have a little bit of north to clean up. We use spies mainly for Ren Tan's case, and now we can attack Ping Yuan and take that under our control. But with Cao Cao's army still swarming north, we cannot do that yet. We have to have to clean this up a little bit more. We'll keep the main army here. We have the siege weapons. We'll go take care of Ping Yuan, which I think has... Oh no, it does not have walls yet. So maybe we can send the bandits and just take care of it. There's there's quite a few armies. So we'll keep one army here. We'll bring the bandit girls, the poison volley girls, with whoever is going that way with them. Uh, I don't think there's any battle that's going to be too difficult for us unless they're just running pure cavalry, uh, which I doubt any AI army would run. So I think we'll be, we'll be all good here moving forward. A couple more garlic to increase replenishment for whichever army needs it, which whichever army they, they might need it. Well, we'll consider that. But anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. See you all next time. Bye.